how you doing? This is Yaakov uh, with a beautiful idea. And the merit of this beautiful idea, may everybody merit to come closer to Hashem and to be able to see their true path and also to be able to clarify, no matter what's going on in front of you, that uh, you are a soul and not a body. And uh, what that means really is is that uh, that you're not all the negative cravings and everything that you have that your body seeks to want to control. Rather, the body is supposed to be a vessel uh, to be able to serve the soul. And um, everybody merit to see that. Okay, so one of the I'm going to bring up actually a couple things here. Um, don't normally read to, to everybody, but today I think I will. I've I've had an idea. I wanted to actually um, to be able to to read this to people um, from the Kutei Alachot and uh, Rabbi, Na, Rabbi, Na, Rabbi Natan of Rabbi Nassan of Bresov's, um, which is Rabbi Nachman's prime disciple. Um, he wrote a magnum opus. It's like four thousand pages. Crazy, amazing stuff. It's it's on halacha, uh, Jewish law, and he brings Rabbi Nachman's teachings on Jewish law, um, and he brings out amazing secrets and secrets that are for actually everybody uh, that opens the world up for like everyone, so that they should know. Um, because really, um, we're all we're all very lofty souls. We're all very holy souls, and. Everybody, everybody in their own place. Everybody is in its own place. Everybody has a test. We're coming into this world. We have a test, and we don't always know what the test is. Okay, uh, the um, the Gemara says before a baby is born, it actually learns everything inside the mother's womb that it's supposed to know, and even science. I remember taking a class called biological psychology many years ago. <laughs> they said the the most amount of neurons that are, uh, um, uh, 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 what do you call it, um, I believe the most amount of neurons, I believe it's most amount of neurons that are, um, that are basically present within a person is at the time actually when the baby's inside the, um, the, the womb, which is when the Gemara already wrote, the, the rabbis already said many thousands of years ago already that the baby is learning with an angel all the truth, all the Torah that it's going to know in its lifetime. And so the whole idea is when actually when a person comes out of out of the mother's womb that uh the that the person forgets. So the person comes to this world, doesn't know anything, doesn't remember anything really. It's like it's so intrigued by everything and follow it follows after its eyes. It's so easy to follow after the eyes. Good cupcakes, you know, nice looking things, this, you know, beach, everything. Everything's awesome, you know, um, great activities, and there's nothing wrong with doing it. But we have to know that the the physical thing, the outside aspect of what we're seeing, which is we're always looking at the outside. We're not always our eyes are not always helping us penetrate to what's going on inside, because we're not. Always, we always stop. We the yitzhara, the body itself, just like I, I want the ice cream and I'm gone. I'm I'm good. And after after I'm done with the ice cream, I'm done. I don't. I'm not trying to pierce the ice cream. Looking, hmm, what, what is it, how is it, how is it made? And who made it? And who gave him idea? And what company is it? And whatever, and furthermore, how did Hashem, how did they create, the, get this idea? And really, if you, you're going to penetrate the core, you'll see Hashem. So you'll see, you'll see the godliness, the aspect of the soul within everything that you'll be able to penetrate. If you, if you can, if you have the patience and you have the yearning to want to see what's happening really in reality and not just look at the facade. And not look at the outside mask like we discussed before. There is a story Rabbi Nachman has called the Exchange Children. The Exchange Children is speaking about this um, king who had a slave woman and uh, a slave, okay, and a, and also a, yeah, he had a wife, he had a queen, okay, and they both gave birth. And at birth, um, the midwife exchanged the babies so that the slave, uh, the prince was with the slave. And the slave became a prince, okay? And it's very, it's very similar also to Moshe Rabbeinu, to a certain degree. Um, because he was, he was born through, to Yocheved, um, and, and he was switched to be, um, and, and also he was raised in the, in the palace of Paro, in the palace of Paro, in a different palace other than really his own home. 
technically his regarding his majority of his youth. So we really have to really have to also take that into account. Okay. Um, and, and also, I'll, I'll give you a chidush on a later time uh, uh, that I have on this, a, a novel idea. But I want to read to you from this. Because there's an idea of this exchange children happening with all of us. Okay? It's actually a secret, it's a secret Kabbalistic uh, concept that is happening with everybody. People want to know, Jewish people 100% believe in Gilgulei Nishamot, Gilgulei Nishamot, which is reincarnation. Okay? One of the rabbis that I know of... Um, that I used to listen to many, many years ago, um, has has uh, said that one of the ways you want to understand yourself and want to understand what's happening in your life, I want to understand what you need to correct in your life and what I need to correct in my life is, you know, people people are born with sometimes we see good and innate characteristics. Some people have really horrible ones or some people in the middle, whatever the situation is, you know. Um, we have to understand simply, uh, like a simple person, how you came into the world, all right, is what you did or didn't fix previously. Just very simple. It's not a it's not a complicated idea. Whatever you fixed previously when you came into the world, so things were easy for you regarding that thing. That's not your test. It's not your real test, okay? Or it could be that it's a part of your real test, so you were good at this. So God wants to see how excellent, how much more you can bring up the bring up bring that bring that aspect of yourself up as well. But uh, the things that have been neglected. And we feel in our life, we see in our life the things that we're neglecting, our faith, our, our trust in God, trust in ourself a lot more, um, anger, all these different things. So we're, um, we're, we're being tested when we come into this world. And, and, that, and that's what we didn't fix or what we did fix, okay, from our previous lifetimes, okay? Very simply. So we have to also understand that when we come into this world, we're coming, we're coming in, um, in such a way into this world where... Uh, you're coming into this world in such a way that um, that sometimes it feels like, okay, I'm coming to this world. Am, am I going to get the truth? Am I going to get the truth? Am I going to get straight A's? Am I not going to get straight A's? Am I a boy or am I a girl? Am I going to act like a girl or am I a boy? Am I going to... All these different questions. There's so many questions, especially now, gender, identity, the whole, you know, all this stuff that people are having trouble with in, in, in our generation, which is, you know, very difficult because of all the different sins that are going on our, from our generation, right? That we're, that we're going away from really who we are. We're trying to change who we are. We think that Hashem, the way Hashem created us, we're trying, we're, we're trying to confuse the situation. We're trying to run away from the truth. Okay, that's one meaning. That's only one aspect. But there's so many different things. Am I Jewish? Am I not Jewish? Even if I'm born Jew, non-Jewish, does that mean, can I be Jewish? And if I'm Jewish, does that mean I can act like a non-Jewish person, or or, or or do I have to go according to the laws of God? Who am I helping? Like, what what's the situation? Can I just do whatever I want to do? Like, what what's happening in this world? You know. So this this is a deep kabbalistic idea called the palace of exchanges. Okay. Where in this in this palace, people, let's say a man, a man that didn't do tshuva yet, he didn't do repent for certain deeds, okay. So let's say, let's say he didn't repent for his anger, or he didn't, or he didn't do certain things, didn't do tshuva, didn't do repent regarding certain things, and return to God and admit, thank, you, like God, I'm I'm wrong, I didn't, I'm sorry, I didn't do that, I didn't treat myself well, I didn't treat my family well, my family didn't treat me well, um, you know, I'm taking them too seriously. Person, a man might feel like a girl. He is so sensitive because he didn't he did he didn't rectify his feelings. He didn't bring his feelings to God. He didn't clarify, yes, I am a man, but I'm being treated like a like a like a low life. Like so why are a person so so sensitive, like a like a little little baby or a little girl, whatever the situation is. He feels like his soul has been exchanged in, in certain moments or certain days with a baby. Or, or a girl, a woman is, has been feeling that she's been traded places with a man. She feels like, I have to be the man now. No, no, she forgets what it means to be a woman. That means, that, I'm not saying that there's like an actual exact delineation, but there are general things that are, that are it's, a woman should be, should feel okay to be a woman, to feel, to feel okay, to feel sensitive regarding certain things, because that's part of being a woman. So, so, so it's part of it. It's part of how Hashem created us. And, and knowing how to utilize our, our our weaknesses to to turn them into strengths, and not look down on ourselves. So and not think that you know, if David Melech if he's king, if sorry if David Melech is considered a low life by his own family, 
Should he be king? Could he be king? How is that possible? How can you switch up like that? Maybe he's not king. Maybe he's illegitimate. You know, people think they're illegitimate. They could be born into the, the palace of the king and they feel illegitimate. So I want to read his beautiful ideas, okay? To under, so people should clarify um, in, their, in, in their understanding um, about a lot of things, okay? About a lot of things. Um, okay, um, so I'm going to... I'm gonna start from over here, so people uh, should should uh, should be able to benefit from this. Okay. Um, okay. So regarding all these topics that we just spoke about, okay, it's called which which is the aspect of a palace of exchanges, which is a person's soul literally feels that it's being exchanged sometimes on a daily basis, sometimes many times a day. Which is why Rabbi, Rabbi Nachman himself said you'd have to start over sometimes many times a day, because we're already we're already grabbing on to the wrong ideas, and those are the ideas of me, a man, if I was being a woman. You understand? And it's okay to be a woman, but if you're a woman, it's not okay to be a man. To to to, to, to like to, like to, to be like to be a man, it's okay to have feelings for a woman. It's okay to have feelings. It's also okay for everybody to have feelings. It's okay to have. It's different for a man. It needs to it needs to be in control of himself. It needs to be able to do. Be able when a person does chuva, so they they they're not like every little thing that comment that somebody makes. They're not. They're not like uh, whatever it is. A woman, a, a woman needs her husband. A woman needs her friends to be, or her family to be there for her. She should rely, be be able to rely on her family to be able to rely on things like that. It's it's important for a, a woman to be able to express his feelings. It's important for a husband to be able to express his feelings. But there are differences that people need to meet need to know, and they are healthy differences. It's not a problem. And this is this is the mixture. It's it's a deep kabbalistic thing. And when this last generation, we see it happening right in front of our face. Okay, all these different roles that people are changing and people are thinking differently about themselves. People who are uh, people are who are such a huge person or they have a tremendous soul. They think so low of themselves. They feel like they're nothing. People that that are nothing think that they're God. Okay, this is this is also an aspect of being exchanged. Okay, and so. These are all aspects of like a person feels kind of like hell because as long as you f don't feel like yourself, if you're a king, you should feel like a king, you should feel like you're the king. Meaning if you're Mashiach, Mashi Mashi you should feel like you're the king Mashiach. If you're, if you're, if you're, if you're, um, if you're a student, you should feel like a humble student who wants to learn and be gratified, feel grateful and joy and joy from that. If you're an amazing teacher, you should feel like if you're so grateful to be a teacher. You shouldn't feel. I'm not saying a teacher not doesn't act like a student, but you should also you should feel great to be all your roles, whatever you're supposed to be at the right time. Okay, and so that's why a person needs to pray on this a lot. And it says here in the Kotel Achot. Rabbi, Rabbi Natan's magnum opus, because a person needs to to always to uh, to be able to have uh, mesiris nefesh, which means self sacrifice, with all of their movements and with their whole life for Hashem. For Hashem, blessed is He, that through Hashem, that through Hashem we're saved by our, from our enemies all the time, and the people that they hate us and they want to, to be able to steal and to and to throw us down, throw our soul down and to switch our souls. Okay, and it's not just referring to referring to the enemies, the spiritual enemies, okay, that a person has, and also the physical enemies that a person has, um, regarding the these palace of exchanges, which is happening within the person's soul, uh, could happen any time, okay. You, and you know who you are. I know who I am. I, I feel it. Ki of Charlie, it's impossible to be saved from all of this except through prayer and a lot of supplications, a lot, a lot, because there are how many souls, um. That they're sunk in this, that they're uh, that they're starving, and they're so and and, and they feel they feel and and, and 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 they're and they feel like people are attacking their soul always, and they, they need to have a lot of rachamim, they need to have a lot of a lot of mercy, because they're and to be able to strengthen with great strength, to be able to be saved from these obstacles, from the obstacles of the soul, from the eight sahara, from all the thoughts. Rabbi Nachman already says that the main enemy is this is the thoughts. Is the dimyonos, the imaginations, all the different thoughts that were that were ready that are going against us, okay? And therefore, it says here, and uh, therefore David Amelech, okay, on this matter, okay, peace be upon him, specifically 
we know that he out of the, there's Tanakh, right? We have Tanakh, Torah Navim, Torah Navim Kasuvim, the the Torah, the prophets, and the Kasuvim, the writings. Okay, we see over there that the specific one book, one sefer, one book that's dedicated to Tfila prayer, and Torah is included in it is Tehillim, is is Tehillim. It's the one, it's the one book that's written in Ruach Hakodesh, a holy, pro, holy prophetic inspiration by King David. Okay, that he believed, that he believed, that he believed that he was doing his spodadut. That, that by the way, his Tehillim people don't know Tehillim in Psalms is personal prayer that's been recorded by King David, and also and also Moshe Rabbeinu and Asaf and a few other individuals that David Amelech gathered these Tehillim together. That's that's in this one sefer in this one book. Okay, but most the majority is written by King David. And it's attributed to him because people need to know about how holy and this amazing the Sefer is. Okay? Because why? Why is it so holy? Because this secret that we're talking about, the switching, exchanging of the souls, where a person feels like one day I feel like I'm on top of the world and I feel great. The next day I feel like I'm the biggest low life in the face of the planet and I, there's nobody lower than me. Okay? It's, it's, it's supposed to happen. Meaning... Because the palace of exchanges, a person's soul feels like they're being exchanged. But you're not. You're really not. It's only a test. Okay? And it came from the sin. came from the sin of Adam and Chava, the first sin. Not their fault. Everybody understands. Okay? The first human beings, they didn't have sin before that. So understand. It's a very difficult thing. But understand that there are such huge souls that when they sin, they this huge exchange caused to happen. We read that it's called Eitz Hadas Tovarah, the, the tree that God told them not to not to eat from is called the tree of knowledge of good and evil okay and the zohar says and 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 the and a rabbis said okay eights eights is eights is a tree and also it comes from the word eitsa which is advice which is the advice of good and evil where good and evil are mixed where one day you have the good advice the second day you have the worst advice on earth that makes you think that you're somebody else that you're not and therefore, we're going to go continue. The David Amalekh, specifically, he increased in tefillah a lot about this specific thing, more than all the tzaddikim. Meaning, this is this is something that every person, every tzaddik, every human being, every person has to deal with in this world. From these thoughts and feelings that I think something's not right, I'm not right, and they 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 start to question themselves who they are, because the main Tikkun, the main correction of of of, uh, um, of this called the Palace of Exchanges, okay, is through David Amelech that he did this Tikkun. This he corrected this aspect of exchanges that it looks like your soul's being exchanged. And David Amelech says, "No, he I I pray to God, and every time that the Yitzhahara and my enemies, my physical enemies, my spiritual enemies were trying to come at me, I pray to God, and I cast everything on him every time." And he completed this tikkun with com- complete completion, and that's why, and that's why David Amalek Mashiach specifically comes from David as well. I'll pick Kabbalah. I'll pick the deepest esoteric so- thoughts. This is the reason, okay? Because he clarified the truth the most, and so he completed this tikkun the most. This correction, because there in this palace of exchanges. Through the is, is which is through the sin of Adam and uh, the 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 Adam and Chava, through the fact that the first man, they're such holy souls, they're so precious, most precious souls. God, God Himself created them directly. They didn't even see a mother and father. They created uh, God created them directly. That they are, and and they and also referring to the nefesh, the soul of Avram Avinu. Who did Avram come from? Avram Avraham came from Terach. The soul, the soul of the high soul of Avram came from this idol worshiper. It's like a palace of exchanges where good comes from evil. How is that possible? Because the soul's being exchanged. It's constant clarification. What could Avram say? Listen, I come from idol worshiper. How in the world can I come serve God now? He had to clarify that. No, but I'm looking for the truth, right? I'm looking for the straight up truth. <laughs> That's why Avram needed to come from Terach. Because specifically, his soul was bound, and all the souls after Adam and after the sin of Adam and Chava are bound with this palace of exchanges. Precious souls. We're all very precious souls. You just have to recognize it. That because of this, he needed to come from Terach. And, and so the souls of how many tzaddikim, that they're so big and they're so high, okay, that's, written, that's all that's written about them. 
And also, this is the, we're referring to the soul of David Amelech. We find that Yishai, that that um, that Jesse, that Yishai, he also felt that he was illegitimate, even though he kept the Torah and he was the Zohar says he was a complete righteous person, never sinned. Okay, but he also questioned his legitimacy being a Jew. Okay, because he coming from Mo, because he came from Ruth, which came from Moab. Okay, Shehu b'chiren Mashiach and David Amalek, he, he's that he's the aspect of a Mashiach. Okay, that also he had to deal with this, and he dealt with this the best. And uh, and about him, I love it. Uh, and and about David, and and from David, which is the, we find that Mashiach come from Hashem knew Mashiach would come from David Amalek. That's why he had the test that he ta- that he had, where the Yitzhahara strengthened and, uh, and his enemy strengthened over him over David Amel so much so without measure without measure, and therefore, and therefore, how many? That's why a person has to go through so many different Gilgulim, okay, different reincarnations in this world until it comes out, and until the soul the soul is being clarified in honesty and truth. Okay, that I am a servant of God, and 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 the soul is the soul which was stolen after the son of Adam and Chava. It was it then had to go through through this whole process of being clarified. It had to be it, it, where where you see Yosef was sold. Yosef and his brothers were sold. Okay, that's also that's also part of it. That um, that the soul David and Melech originally came from the the the, the daughters of Lot. And and uh, in, with a completely in a completely ugly way in a completely disgusting way, okay, that we're not allowed to do. And Yehuda and Tamar, the whole the whole idea of Judah and Tamar, also um, no Jew or or non Jew is supposed to be able, supposed to do that. It's supposed to it's supposed to have this, but it had to come from this way because after the sin of Adam and Chava, so what the bad the bad in the bad a person let's say is illegitimate or whatever it is. They can switch everything to holiness because their soul is really very high, okay? Because the more the more the more the Yitzhar is strengthening over the person, the really high the soul really is when it's able to overcome and find its point of truth at which it serves God, at which it serves its purpose, okay? Um, and that's why, and all of this is to be able to remove the soul in the way of Geneva, in the way of, of theft. From a sitra achra, from the other side, to the forces of the other side. So it looks like people had to come in into this world in an illegitimate way. The, there are some very, very holy people that had to deal with these situations. Specifically, the, the soul of David, how it came into the world. Yehuda and Tamar, so on and so forth. Boaz and Ruth, the whole situation, uh, Boaz and Ruth. The whole situation was very funky. Was funky in a certain way. Naomi told Ruth to go do this and not whatever the situation is, okay. And Yishai, him, Jesse himself thought he was illegitimate. And David also, he was just a man in the fields. Everybody thought also he was illegitimate, okay. Also, this whole idea has to do with this palace of exchanges, where the soul is being exchanged. Looks like the soul of the, the soul of the prince, uh, the King David, is being exchanged with a slave. He's like, I'm a slave. I'm I'm a nobody. I'm a, whatever it is, okay. And that's part of this is part of the process where where the where the where the the kingship of of Mashiach of David of where from Adam after the sin so the souls very high pre, the highest precious soul, souls were then switched to make feel like they're the lowest people the lowest things on the face of the planet and don't believe in themselves at all and they're like literally far away even came we know Mashiach literally is coming from a ger from a convert. People don't know that. People don't know where. Why is that situation, right? Because the holiest souls they're coming from, they're they're coming from the the other side. They're taking the sparks that are that are now covered over in darkness, and they're illuminating. They're being illuminated, okay. And and it looks like yeah, in a way that we're stealing from the forces of the other side, okay. Okay, no, 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 no. And from this, a person is able to take musar. A person is able to take lessons uh, for themselves. Okay, when a person sees that the yitzhara, that their evil inclination and their and their tavot and their and their uh, and their desires and their their uh, lusts and their addictions, they're strengthening over that. Where they're being strengthened over the person so much, so much that it appears to the person that it's so difficult to break them. 
They need to know, a person needs to know, that certainly Hashem would not, Hashem, first of all, Hashem is with them. And Hashem would not do this unless Hashem gave them the power to break them. To break that. That's the only reason a person is receiving that. Because you do have the power to break it. Okay? And if you didn't have the power, Hashem wouldn't send you, Hashem wouldn't send you that test. And that kind of yates Sahara. And specifically the opposite. You should even know that in your soul, that when you see that this is Yetzirah, this great Yetzirah, this great evil inclination is coming against you, okay, you should know that certainly your soul is very high and very precious and very, very holy at its root, at its source, okay? And therefore, the Yetzirah is strengthening over a person's soul that, that much. That's why. Because whatever a soul, whatever, whoever a soul that's so precious is, and so high, that it's so so high in the world. So the Yitzhahara likes to overcome it and get, and, and strengthen itself even more to go against the person more and more and more and more. Okay? Just like the Gemara says, a person who's bigger than his friend. Okay, you see a person with more wisdom than your friend in a certain way. It's because his Yitzhahara, his evil inclination is bigger. So in order to battle your evil inclination, you got to get smarter. You have to have increased faith. You have to be able to deal with him. And also, he's going to grow. The Yitzhahara also grows with a person, the evil inclination. So that's why you always have to be able to try to understand um, that that as he grows with you. So he's trying to outsmart you. So how do you outsmart him? With faith. He's going to explain. Because, okay, we said whoever is bigger than his friend is because his friend is because his, his Yitzhahara is bigger than his friend. And you need to be smarter than Yitzhahara. That's why. You need to be, have more faith. You have to be more connected with with Hashem, and we we find here there's also how the Yitzhahara works. The Yitzhahara, he does he deals with the nations in a certain way. The, the nations of the world, he gives them a certain evil inclination, which is which is befitting them to overcome them with all these tavot. Okay, and if a person's and and then and then and then what the Hashem what the Yitzhahara the the strength of the Yitzhahara. Is on on Am Yisrael is even stronger is even stronger because Hashem tasked them with six hundred thirteen uh, mitzvot to do. So the Yitzhahara says, "I'm going to get you in every single way to not to do them and to, to do your purpose." Okay, and so therefore, I'm gonna I'm gonna strengthen myself even further. And even more than that, the Talmidei Chachamim, the the most learned people, the Yitzhahara strengthens itself over over the person even even more in the most learned people in Am Yisrael it could be that the Yitzhahara the evil inclination is is even stronger on them the most okay and this is what David Amelech okay um, and this is what David Amelech love Shalom may peace be upon him he had he was in great danger all of his life okay and and we have and and because 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 um, because he was such a huge soul, the biggest soul, the, the soul of this, his the Mashiach will come from him. He did this complete tikkun, completely. Because the Yitzhahara, the Yitzhahara is a thing who's really, is making you feel like the soul is being exchanged, literally. Okay, like you feel like you're you're somebody you're not. You have to understand that. You have to really, you have to really get that. So he's, in each one moment to the next, he can make you feel like, Somebody made a comment to you. You feel now like a little disabled, uh, a little pipsqueak. How is that possible? How is that possible? You, in that moment, you feel like your whole life has been exchanged with somebody else's. And then you're not yourself anymore. Okay? And and about this, a person, every person needs to go in this way. Because there's no, there's no advice. Okay? Except for one thing. The whole Sefer Tehillim that David Amalek wrote, why did he write the Sefer Tehillim? Why is Mashiach coming from him? He did this Tikkun, he did this correction the most, right? Because Tehillim represents the personal prayer from his Tefillot, that he increased in his Tefillot non-stop to pray to be saved from this Yetzirah and all of its sicknesses that his soul should never be lost from being who he's supposed to be. Okay? That only Hashem knows and we're asking Hashem to guide us on our, on our, on our path to the, to the real truth of who we are. And every person needs to be able to go on this way also, because there's no other advice to be able to be saved from all of this except through increasing in prayer and supplication without measure all the days of your life, just like David Amalekh, and just like it's written many, many times about this. Um, 
And so also, he writes over here in a different place also, just to end that, um, there are people literally born they, like th to people that are very good, and they're very righteous, and they're doing, and, and they have deeds that are, that are fitting like, like evil people. And they're evil people, whatever, quote unquote, that are people that are born from people, or they start out in a certain way, they look like they're from the hood, or whatever it is, and they become to be the holiest people. How is that? That's also this aspect of the palace of exchanges as well. Okay, where we're really, it really the person, not everything is how it appears. Not in this last generation, Lukut Emran, lesson one, Lukut Emran, the Rabbi Nachman's magnum opus, he brings down right there very strongly that uh, one of the most important things the Yitzhahara tries to do is to make a mitzvah, a good deed, look like a bad deed, and a bad deed look like a good deed. Also, a, a good point in a person, he makes it look like a bad point, and a bad point, he makes it look like a good point. Okay, so you have to understand all these different things. When a person, when a person, even the most evil person, he has this good thoughts, he starts doing tshuva, he starts repenting. It's really a very high soul and stuck in there. Don't be fooled. Don't be fooled. That's why we have to be careful. Look for the good, and we have to bring out the good. Pray constantly to be able to be saved from from these thoughts and recognizing that you're not your thoughts, that you're not your bad thoughts, just like you're not your body. Okay, your body is a part of, of fu your functioning. Your body is supposed to serve your soul. Your soul is your main thing. Your soul guides your body. Okay, and don't be confused. Who's in control? God is in control. That's why when we're saying the Yetzirahs, the evil inclination is always trying to counter us. The Gemara, the Gemara says, you want to be able to conquer Yetzirah. You can't be able. You can't conquer him except through Hashem. And that's why David Amalekh is saying, and that's why Rabbi Natan is saying that David Amalekh, he did this correction so completely. With the Yitzhahara, every time the Yitzhahara tried to bother him, he increased in his tefillah. He prayed to Hashem he, with faith. The Yitzhahara might be, he's trying to outsmart me here with all the thoughts, trying to send me thoughts, okay? But he cannot outsmart faith. The Yitzhahara can never outsmart faith. If you go pray to Hashem, you connect yourself to Hashem. It says in, in, the, in the night davening, the night davening, that the night prayers that that uh, that uh, Am Yisrael, the Jewish people are praying, it says that that Yaakov was saved from an enemy stronger than himself. Blessed are you, Hashem, okay, uh, uh, who redeemed Israel. Meaning, what is Israel? Yaakov's name was changed from Yaakov to Israel, who he really is. His really high soul, his really real, real, true aspect, the highest aspect of himself. Okay, how was he able to do it? Because he was able to be saved from one stronger than him. Who's stronger? The Yitzhahara is stronger than us. We, we, can't, we, we can't deny that. The Yitzhahara is stronger than us after all the history has happened and all the sins and everything from where we are and the generations that we are. The Yitzhahara appears stronger than us. But with God's help, with a lot of prayer and a lot of supplication, okay, I might be powerless according to the thoughts of the Yitzhahara and the evil inclination. But when I connect myself to God... We can overpower him easily. With God's help, we're going to be able to do it. And not don't believe in those thoughts. Don't believe believe that you will be what you will be. Okay? That's why the name of God for tshuva is Ekeh, which is I will be. When you're doing tshuva, when you're going to return to God, when you're going to pray to God, you will be what you will be. Don't Nobody knows what you'll be, but you're going to be it. You're going to be whoever you'll be, and that's what everybody is waiting for. Your family's waiting for you to be who you're supposed to be. I'm waiting for me to be who I'm supposed to be. Everybody's waiting for who we're supposed to be. May everybody merit to see and to see and, and to be happy that they're on the path to be who they're supposed to be, and they're not stopping, and they're praying, and they're not stopping. There is no other way. Continue to pray. You have all the hope. You have weapons in your hands. You're going to win. Have a great day. Bye.